Welcome to Subramani. Uh, I found a uh, document by William Locke, who is the head of international equity for Morgan Stanley. He had some 10 points on uh, what he learned from the from the equity market over the last 20 years. Uh, so I thought I will uh, uh, make a video on what he learned and what my learning was and how the, is there a similarity. So the first one he says is buy good stocks and get away from the uh, from the way of compounding. Uh, I completely agree uh, and he says how Morgan Stanley is a great stock picker all over the world. Of course they are, I am sure they must be having a good portfolio but in my case I pick up stocks in the Indian portfolio but internationally I put it into index funds right I put it into two three index funds which decide uh, whether to put it in China or Japan or US or Europe whatever they decide they allocate so I don't do anything I just do an SIP in that having said that I do pick stocks within the country uh, because uh, presumably I understand a little better within the country though of course I hold uh, shares like uh, Tata Motors which I don't understand because it's too big an operation right multiple countries so should I be happy that the pound has fallen in value uh, or should I be uh, unhappy that China demand has gone up or gone down I have no clue so though so Tata Motors uh, is there in my portfolio once upon a time I used to understand it but now after JLR and all which is much bigger uh, I don't really, uh, I can't claim to understand its balance sheet. So these are exceptions, but normally outside the country indexing within the country, I pick up stocks. So I have picked up stocks over the last uh, 40 years of active investing uh, and uh, it has helped in the sense that uh, I've been able to say what, what I need in a company and I keep looking and I keep uh, throwing out companies. Sometimes uh, it's a mistake, sometimes it's right that I threw it away. Uh, for example, uh, I sold uh, RK uh, at a very good price and now RK I can't even see. I saw, I sold uh, Infosys at a very, uh, very early stage but uh, I held on to Hero Honda, uh, Sun Pharma and all for long periods of time. So there will be no right wrong. So a lot of things that I did, some right, some wrong. But yes, picking up good stocks at a good price is very important. So first of all, uh, pick great stocks and get out of the way of compounding. I completely agree. It has worked for me. I have picked up great stocks and uh, held on for 30, 40 years and it has worked for me, right? 1977, must thank uh, George Fernandez for kicking out all these uh, FERA companies who are forced to dilute. The second point that the uh, report talks about is know what you own. This is very important. Like for example, I uh, zeroed in on the uh, Murgapa group in 1986-87. So I have been buying shares right since then. So 1986 would mean about 35-36 years of trusting that management. Uh, 1978, 1977-78 uh, uh, for Reliance and uh, HDFC group. Right, so these have been trusted over long periods of time. But this is the first time the Murugappa group is now no longer Murugappa group, it is split into different parts. Which part to trust, we have to do, I now don't have the ability to look for it. So it, I, I don't have the ability to find out which is a good, good, good part, bad part, which industry is good, should I keep carburant universal and sell off Cholamandalam. I am today not very capable of making those decisions. Uh, so, going forward, I do not know what I will do. Uh, similarly, I do not know how HDFC will be without Deepak Parekh and Mr. Aditya Puri. I have no clue. But as of now, I am holding. Right. So, Reliance also, we saw the transition from Dhirubhai to Mukesh Anil and then only Mukesh. We saw the transition. The transition was good. How will it be from Mukesh Bhai to the others? I don't know whether I will have the competence. So, knowing what you own, why you own, what they are doing, what is the change that is happening in their management, all that is very important. So, know the company in which you have invested is important. Uh, third is quality of management. Now, quality of management I think is exaggerated. As far as I am concerned, the quality of management should be reasonably good. Uh, I don't want the best, I, want, I don't want a, a company which uh, hires only from uh, Ivy League and IM and IIT and uh, uh, I don't think uh, ICICI is a great example of uh, what a company should be doing. 
uh, while hiring it hired the best but it took a very very long time and only under the current leadership is it getting a pe comparable to uh, hdfc earlier it used to get a much worse pe and pb right uh, so i think as long as my management stays out of controversies i'm happy so i'm happy with the supreme industries i'm happy with uh, sundaram i'm happy with uh, with an aisher motor i'm very happy with the uh, murugappa group hdfc group uh, reliance as long as you don't uh, be in the headlines or page 3 or you create a mess uh, as long as you don't do that i'm fine i don't have the ability or the competence to uh, find out what is good quality management i mean i don't have the ability to find out why should i keep uh, saying i have the ability to find out Morgan Stanley also says that it has benchmarks and it uh, also scare, tells us that benchmarks are not always useful which is completely right because if you hug the benchmark you will get benchmark performance if you try to uh, get away from the benchmark you could get alpha but you could also make a loss so i personally in my own investment which is what i'm talking about i don't even have benchmarks i i'm happy with the growth that is happening because uh, my dividend income is more than my household expenses so i really don't have too much i don't measure too much which is not very good but i keep looking once in a while at the irr and i'm quite happy with the irr that i receive but do i do a regular quarterly performance review and see what to change no i don't i am a very bottom up kind of a person so to me it doesn't really matter but the number of companies that i hold is much greater than what all great people uh, suggest people suggest 10 to 15 companies or given my size of portfolio uh, i must be struggling with 50 50 Yes of course the uh, portfolio sizing is not something very easy i'm trying to learn it over a period of time but still i can't do very many big transactions i have to do many small transactions right so i keep saying it's like my eating idli uh, i can eat two at a time right so if i have to eat 500 at least it will take me maybe two years uh, i i'm not going to eat idli every day and i'm not going to eat more than two every day so it takes me a long time to eat idli so similarly my portfolio gets built over a longer period of time than what people would like to i don't invest so quickly in any company i hold for a, i hold on for some time see how it is working and then keep adding but i keep adding up and i keep adding down depending on the conviction that i have in the management so uh one thing which he uh, says is the risk management should be absolute not relative first of all risk management is the most important thing you do like uh, nimisha of icici prudential says i run icici prudential risk management uh, fund management is incidental to it completely right you are here to make sure that you do not lose money right you do not lose money in a big way so you take a bet on some company and hold on for a long period of time and you keep adding right now i have two companies in which i have a 10 year view and i'm going to add some shares every month they are right now building market share they don't have profitability they are in bad shape as far as the pnl is concerned but that does not matter to me i am happy building my port- my uh, portfolio with them and that is my risk management because overall i've kept a limit of x amount which i'll put in these companies and keep seeing what is my irr but i will look at my irr only after 5 6 years right now there can't be any irr though i am still in the green in both uh the returns are not too great but i am happy building my portfolio in those two companies so risk management uh morgan also says uh, morgan uh, stanley also says that what you do not own is just as important as what you own i completely agree because within my uh, limitations and within my understanding certain companies which uh, which are not good for the country or good not good for the world are something which i don't own now india does not have any arms and ammunition manufacturer not in a big way at least uh, but um, i own shares of uh, hindustan aeronautics right hindustan aeronautics uh, technically speaking is an airline uh, airplane manufacturer in fact for people who do not know it was was started by walchand hirachand so we keep talking of jrd tata as the father of civil aviation but the uh, father of aviation manufacturing in india is walchand hirachand sorry that's uh, that's so similarly i do not own any uh, shares of monsanto which i thought was responsible for many pharmaceuticals and i do not hold any shares of uh, itc which i thought was uh, creating cancer 
uh, these are my views and obviously because of this uh, the returns on my portfolio should be lesser but I have been holding shares for a very long time and uh, this uh, great uh, wisdom came to me only about 7-8 uh, years ago maybe 10 years ago that I stopped uh, holding or uh, maybe even less than that for uh, Monsanto and ITC and because I remember I sold ITC and I bought Siemens and I thought my returns will go down but actually ITC fell and Siemens uh, went up dramatically so I think it's just God's way of saying, okay, here's a good decision, so I'll get rewarded. No, but uh, jokes apart, I, I personally did not like uh, that industry which was causing harm, so I didn't buy. But uh, <coughs> what you do not own is just as important as what you own. You have to know that, okay, is my paisa banega, is my banega. Sometimes you're wrong, sometimes you make money uh, thinking of something else, but you make money in some, th some other share, right? It's like a, it's like Shah Rukh Khan saying, I did this great acting and that movie didn't do well and I did this uh, bad acting and that movie did very well. So sometimes you, your luck plays out, you're in the right industry at the right time, right? So when the TCS IPO came, I thought it was a good share to buy and hold because it was a Tata Group share, it was in software industry and for very many generations, uh, or rather for a full generation, there had not been a Tata Group uh, IPO so I said this should be a good share to buy and I have benefited so it's uh, some part luck part hunch part intuition whatever you want to call it uh, express your conviction in um, uh, okay one thing which uh, I slightly differ from uh, Morgan Stanley and from Warren Buffett is to say that I have a concentrated portfolio I struggle with that I can't have a concentrated portfolio because if I like two companies I'll own both like Goodless Netolac or uh, whatever the new name is uh, Kansai Nerolak uh, and Asian Paints. I uh, so I can't run a concentrated portfolio. I, I try running a concentrated portfolio, but uh, what happens is concentration gets done over a period of time. Let's say about 10 lakhs rupees worth of uh, some company shares. I built a portfolio that 10 becomes 20, 30, 40, maybe a crore, two crores. Uh, then I don't mind concentration. So my concentration is built up. The conviction is built up rather than I uh, will I sell a share worth 2 crores to buy another share worth 2 crores extremely unlikely. My transaction sizes are much smaller but my portfolio gets built to more than 2 crores that is a different thing. So how I handle risk is that way I am not even saying it is right because uh, I learned portfolio sizing from Naren and uh, therefore I started doing bigger transactions but I it will still take me a long time to build a 2 crore portfolio. It is not one single transaction it will be 5 lakhs, 2 lakhs, 7 lakhs, 10 lakhs or oh, the market has fallen another 5 lakhs. So similarly my 2 crore portfolio will get built plus there is appreciation but will I ever be able to run a concentrated portfolio not in this birth for sure. I might get more and more risk covered so I will get more and more diversified uh, rather than uh, creating a concentrated portfolio. I can't so uh, one very important thing which Morgan Stanley says it says in number 8 I would have put it number 1 is valuation matters. To me that's very important like I find some very good companies but at very bad values and I know I can wait it out. I am not in a hurry to buy it. I said, well, this is a good company, so I should buy it. But it also happens sometimes that I miss out because of 5, 10 rupees and then I regret. So I, I don't have a value. Like I will not say I will buy the share at 115. I will say anything from 105 to 100, 125 is okay with me. If it is available at 125, so be it. I'll buy it. I won't add too much. But if it comes down to 105, I will buy more of it. Right, so I do that. So valuation is important, and I would have perhaps put it uh, much higher. But yes, valuation uh, you wait for the right value to come, or you pick up some other company in the same industry, or you say, Okay, I don't believe this valuation is right, but I will still put some money into it, saying, What if I am wrong? To me, that question which I keep asking is, What if I am wrong? So I speak to analysts to know what is the mistake I am making, and believe me, I make huge number of mistakes. So that you get to know only when you talk to the analyst who is handling the company on the day to day basis and you realize how wrong you were about valuation. But yes, valuation is important. Uh, the, they also say that uh, maintain a long term view that is something which has always worked for me because uh, I have a long term portfolio on which I can do uh, delivery based trading. I can buy some more shares, I can sell, I can take positions on both sides because I hold, uh, let's say I hold 30,000 shares of a company. I can take a 500 on posi log, um, uh, call position and a 500 put position. 
um, because I have 30,000 shares, I can take a position of 500, 500 in the long and in the short. Because if I do sell it off, it's okay because it will come to 29,500. And if I buy, it's okay, I have money to take delivery. So I use my portfolio to do delivery based trading. So yes, I have a long term view on the, por on the portfolio and I may do transactions of only 500. So 500, 500, 500, I may sell at three prices. Let's say I think it is overvalued at 110. So I'll sell it at 110, I'll sell it at 115 and sell it at 120. At 120, I'll stop because what if I am wrong? And the market is trying to tell me something, He's saying idiot 110 is not overvalued, see at 120 there are still buyers and 125 there are still buyers. Then I will hold on. So at worst I could have got rid of 1500 shares out of 30,000. So that's perfectly alright. Similarly, instead of 30,000 I may be holding uh, 35,000. I may have bought a little more. Then if my portfolio size has increased, I will use it as a sizing opportunity. Or if I get a chance that very I, 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 bought, I buy the share at 642 and it becomes 712 within a day or two, I will trade out also. I know the market will come back to this price. So I do that. Uh, so long term view yes but a short term trading position also uh, Morgan also say Morgan Stanley also says uh, remain curious uh, that is bound to happen you will remain curious because uh, I keep uh, reading Ashwadha Mudaran and Ashwadha Mudaran's recommended 47 rupees is when I entered Zomato uh, I bought sold bought sold I did everything I am still in the green uh, and I have not bought Paytm though even though uh, uh, Ashwath said it is a good buy at 2000. I just didn't believe that after the introduction of Beam, I did not believe the Paytm model is going to work too well. I still have no view on that, but it forces me to take a view on everything and saying I will look at everything and then decide not to buy. So I did not buy Paytm, which means it's a positive decision of having seen and decided not to buy. It is not as though I didn't see. Nika I saw, I didn't understand the model, I didn't buy. Paytm, uh, I didn't like the model so I didn't buy. Uh, Zomato I have bought but at uh, prices which uh, um, Ashwad Damodaran said and then I then I saw a jump, I sold, I bought, I sold. So I am in the green and I am happy building a portfolio. Similarly Indigo I bought, sold, bought, sold and I still hold a portfolio where I am in the green. So some of these things you keep doing, you keep remaining curious and at some stage I will stop doing that and put in an index fund but right now I am curious. Thank you.